رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنمى Fasting while traveling. Can one break their fast, which is of Ramadan, while they are traveling through plane, train, or car? The answer is yes. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned this in Surah Al-Baqarah, that you should fast. However, whoever is traveling or is sick, or the opposite. Whoever is sick or traveling, from كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر, then he should compensate this on later days. Now, what is traveling? So, Sheikh, I work in a district, and my work is, and I live ten minutes away from there. So, when I travel from home to work. Should I break my fast? Akhi, this is not traveling. This is commuting. Traveling is to move from one city to the other, which the people, the community, do not consider this to be commuting. So, for example, if a person lives in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and travels eight hours by road to Riyadh, or four hours by road to Medina. Is this considered to be traveling? Everyone in the community would say, definitely this is traveling. And when you leave home, you bid your family farewell. And when they call home, people call your home, they would say, oh, he is traveling. He's, he had gone to Riyadh, he had gone to Medina, he had traveled to London. This is considered to be traveling. But if it, the proximity is close, like in this case of Mecca and Medina, uh, let me rephrase that, like in the proximity of Mecca and Jeddah, it's about an hour to an hour and 10 minutes drive. No one in Jeddah says, okay, see you guys, I'm traveling to Mecca. We travel to Mecca maybe a couple of times a day. A lot of the people living in Jeddah work in Mecca, and vice versa. Likewise, when it comes to Dubai and Abu Dhabi, or Dubai and Sharjah, commuting between these two cities is not considered to be traveling anymore. People do it on daily basis. And it's almost as if they are one. They're so close, there are so many buildings and houses in between. So this is not traveling. But if you're traveling to a different city that people consider this to be traveling, in this case, you're exempted from fasting. Sheikh, if I want to fast, can I? Uh, this is a different story. Likewise, if a person who's sick, really sick, can he fast if he wants to? There are three levels. Level number one, when there is harm resulting of fasting or really true hardship. So a person who's sick, if he fasts, his health would deteriorate or his recovery would be delayed or he would get more harm, maybe die. In this case, Fasting is prohibited. What about traveling? Same thing. If the person's fasting would result in him dying, if he's traveling, or causing real hardship to himself and to others, or harm, then it's haram. Imagine a person who's a pilot traveling from Kuala Lumpur to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. The flight is about nine hours, eight and a half hours. But he's headed towards the west, which means that the flight takes off at 12 o'clock noon. So he's been fasting for six hours, from six o'clock to 12 local time in Kuala Lumpur. 
and he flies eight and a half hours. So these are 14 and a half hours of fasting. He reaches Jeddah at 2 o'clock p.m. local time, which means that he has five more hours to fast, which means that the total hours of fasting would be 21 for him. This is hard, but the problem is not in it being hard. The problem is in his concentration with 300 passengers plus on board, and he's the one who's flying. If this would cause his concentration to be bad and to endanger the passengers and himself, fasting here becomes prohibited and haram. Stage two, for a traveler and for someone who's sick, I can fast. There's no danger from that, but there is hardship. It's going to be difficult, but alhamdulillah, my passengers will arrive safely. I'm safe. I'm not uh, uh, putting myself in danger. The sick person says my recovery is on uh, track, but the hardship is there. I'm not going to suffer, but it is really hard. Here, fasting becomes makruh, disliked. Why? There's no harm done. Yes, there is. What's that? Allah has gave you concession. Allah has given you permission not to fast. And you reject Allah's favor and blessing upon you and insist on fasting. Why? As long as there is hardship and some difficulty, it's best to accept Allah's gift to you. This is phase two. Phase three, when fasting and breaking your fast is totally equal. And this is imagined when you're fasting and you have a flight from city A to city B. And the flight is like half an hour. Any hardship? Not at all. As if I'm sitting home. A person who has an illness that allows him to break his fast, but he suppresses himself and there's no pain, a lot of pain, but he can manage. In this case, whatever the fasting and not fasting are equal, scholars say to fast is best. Why? Isn't it Allah's concession to us, permission to us to skip? Yes, but the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Because when you fast in Ramadan, you attain the reward of Ramadan. When you fast with the congregation, with the others around you all fasting, it is much easier than when you fast a few months later, when you are the only one who's fasting and everybody's, everyone else is not. So if fasting and breaking the fast, they're equal, then it's best for you to fast as long as there's no hardship.